Hey everyone, my name's DJ, and I wanna take a moment to thank you for joining us online. We're gonna to worship together, read some scripture with one of our teaching pastors, and hear more about how our church is being a good neighbor in our community. You see, we may be in San Diego, but if we're not in your area, we still have resources for you to check out. So make sure you subscribe to Garden Music on YouTube and our daily devotional podcast. Let's go to church together.
next few minutes. We are so glad you're here. And man, it is a happy Sunday, isn't it, Mina? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it yeah. is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry I got distracted by your... It just, you, but you God know, just always looks so joyous. I, well, thank you. And you know what's even going to make ha- Sundays happier? A what? little happier? What? A little more sleep. Yeah, (laughs) that's right. Starting next Sunday, September 10th, we are shifting our service times by 30 minutes to start at 9 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. We know. Oh, yeah, that's a celebration. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) I love that. So we know that there's so many more community members wanting to join us on Sundays. Yay. And there's students who need an opportunity to be in their own service. So at both service times, we'll be offering a chance for kids programming all the way from infant to middle school. And again, that's at both services, which are at what times, friends? 9 a.m. and you're so good. Awesome. And speaking of next Sunday, did you know that it marks our halfway point of the tag drive we've got going on? I did know that. Yes. Friends, this is an opportunity for you to get involved right now by registering to bring in items that support the San Diego education system. You can sign up to bring in all sorts of school supplies. You can bring in gift cards and kitchenware. This is a new approach in supporting one specific partner, Abraxas High School, and their Kitchen Table Academy for students with special needs. They're in need of a ton of new items like a pasta machine, a thermometer, and more to replenish their brand new kitchen classroom. So if you are ready to go first in supporting Abraxas High School and the education system throughout our community, head to the lobby after service, grab a tag, or if you're watching online, you can head to the churchrb.org slash tag drive for more information. And Mita, yet another thing that makes this such a happy Sunday, friends, is the fact that we get to do all of this because of your continued commitment to generosity. We get to make an impact across San Diego because you are committed to generosity. Yeah, without your financial support, there will undoubtedly be people that we're unable to reach. So partner with us and participate today by going to crb.gives, scanning the QR code right on your seat, or dropping a check or cash in one of the gray boxes in the back or in the lobby. Thank you, friends, for your love and faithfulness to our community. Pray with me for just a minute before we head back to worship. Lord God, you are so good. Thank you for this Sunday. Thank you for everyone who walked in these doors, Lord Jesus. Everyone's carrying something, Lord God. We know that. But allow us the privilege and the honor to continue being in your presence and to be your practical love across this city, Lord Jesus. We love you, God. We love your name. It is matchless, and we ask everything in that powerful name, Jesus. Amen. I won't forget the wonder of how you brought deliverance, the exodus of my heart, because you found me.
Did you know that we have an email newsletter that goes out every single week filled with all the details of what's happening at the church? Subscribe to stay up to date on everything going on in Impact, Sunday services, and everything else here at the Church at RB. Visit thechurchrb.org forward slash newsletter to sign up and have the Good Neighbor News delivered directly to your inbox.
Hey, listen, I want to talk today about the mystery of God. Does that sound good? I, you know, as you guys know, I'm, I, 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 I'm in the business world. I, I get to preach. By the way, I don't know where our pastor is. Where are you at, Pastor? Pastor Jared, where are you at, brother? Man, I just want to honor you and tell you that we love you and your family. And uh, Man, we, uh, you have no idea how much you mean to me on this community, and uh, how hard it is. Listen, I've done, it's the worst job on the planet. And it's the best job on the planet. And you get to have it, and we love you, and we serve you, and we're grateful for you, brother. Uh, everywhere I go, yeah. Everywhere I go, I tell people my story. I'm a kind of an open book guy, and Oh, I, you know, I do this, I do that. And everybody always wants to talk about God. They don't care. I tell you something. They don't care what I do professionally, business-wise. Well, I got a question about God. Don't we all? And it's all, they're never easy ones, right? They're always, and it's always this, this question. Why do bad things happen to good people? Why do good, why do good things happen, you know, bad things happen to good people? Why does this happen? What is this mystery? How does God's economy work? How does this world work? And I always tell them the same thing. I don't know. I have no clue why good things happen to bad people and bad things happen to good people. I don't understand all the mysteries of God. In fact, God, I, this is what I find, though. About 95% of the things in my life aren't fair. Anybody? I mean, they really are. I look at about 95%. They're either too good or they're too bad. About 5%, I'm like, yeah, I deserve that one. About right. So in generally speaking, life is unfair. I remember I was like five years old. My dad sat down. He said, son, I'm going to give you some wisdom that's going to forever change your life. And if you hold on to this, you'll really be able to master life. And I said, what is it, dad? He goes, life's not fair. Okay, off you go. <laughs> it's not fair. I don't know why. I, when I was early pastor in his church, we had this guy, Jason May, and some of you have been with me for a long time. Remember Jason May? Jason May would, would always, I'd see him. We, we, we rented this little building. We had a little tech booth back there. And Jason May ran the tech booth. And every Sunday, I'd drive to church, and he'd be walking along the road. And if I timed it right, I'd see him. I'm like, Jason, hop in. I'll drive in. And one day, I said, man, you have a good job. Why are you taking the bus? And he said, well, I, you know, I was young. I was in between in, insurance. My insurance lapped in my car, and I rear-ended a Ferrari. What? what? Who rear-ends a Ferrari? I mean, first of all, who rear-ends a Ferrari when their insurance laps? Right? And then, you know, it wasn't, after, I mean, literally, this was like a year, year and a half. He's taking the bus. Finally, pays it off, and he gets a forerunner. I'll never forget it. I'm driving to church. I get off the off-ramp, and the, and the forerunner's turned over on its back. And there's, there's Jason walking to church. So I pull over. I'm like, what happened? He's like, I don't know. I was just getting off the freeway. It slipped and flipped. Why, Jason, God, what's wrong with Jason May? What did he do in another life to deserve this? What happened to Jason May? I don't know. But I do know, that this is what I want to talk about today. We live in two realms. We live in a physical, earthly kingdom where there's rules and, and there's functions, and we live in a spiritual kingdom, a spiritual kingdom where there's rules and there's functions. And for those of us, for every single person on this planet, we live in a physical and a spiritual world. And I don't care how far you are from God, I don't care how little you believe in God, no one's going to argue that there's some weird physical and spiritual tension that we're all living in. And so what I want to talk about today is the spiritual kingdom of God. I want to begin to describe to you the spiritual kingdom of God because God begins to teach us how we can live a life that gets blessed. How many of you want to get blessed? This is not going to be a health or wealth service, so don't panic. But I've never met anybody that doesn't want to be blessed. And I want to talk to you today about how to live a life in which you can unlock the blessing and the favor of the kingdom of God. But first, let me describe the kingdom of God through Scripture. Here's some things you've got to understand about the kingdom of God. Here's the first one, Isaiah 55, 8 through 9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways. My thoughts higher than yours. God's going, hey, you got to understand this. There are things I think and ways I do that you are never going to understand. 
You're never going to understand. You can, you can moan and you can gripe and you can be upset about it and you can say it's not fair. There are ways I think and there are ways I do that are so much higher than you that you will never comprehend. And you've got to begin to get at peace with this tension that God, you're God and I'm not. There's things you're doing that I can't see and, and, and I just trust your ways. But it doesn't stop there. God doesn't just say leave it be because here's the thing is people, we, we only feel safe when we can control and explain something. You ever felt that way? It's literally why we're still looking for the Loch Ness Monster. It's unbelievable. Did you see this recently? It's like, well, they're looking again. They're looking again. So I can't explain it. So I got to find, I got to explain it. And God goes, you're never going to be able to explain me. Remember when Job tried to rise up on God and God goes, where were you when I told the oceans where to stop? Where were you when I hung the moon and stars? You finite little ant. You're not God. I'm God. There's things you're never going to understand. But this is what God says. Here's the second part of the kingdom. And I, I have this. Did you ever have love-hate relationships with any of the Bible verses? It's like, oh my gosh, he said it. Well, you live it. All right, here, check it out. <laughs> Proverbs 25, 2. It's the glory of God. What's the glory? The glory is the splendor and the wonder and the power and the majesty of God. It's all of that to hide something from you. How fun is that? All the splendor and all the glory and all the wonder of God, it's his glory to conceal a matter from you. But watch this. But to search the matter out is the glory and the splendor and the wonder of your life. In other words, Scripture says there's this beautiful divine tension. There's this kingdom tension that happens when God says, I'm going to hide something from you because I'm really good at it. And you're going to search it out because when you do, when, our glory, when your glory and my glory collide, oh man, life changes. And right now there's something that God's hiding from you. Maybe it's a restored marriage. Maybe it's a job. Maybe it's a new company. Maybe it's, a, it's the way you feel about yourself. But there's something out of reach. There's something broken. There's something far away and God's going, hey, it's your glory, it's your splendor, it's your wonder to go find it. I'm gonna preach it, mama, all day. I got 21 more minutes, we're gonna do it. So how many of you know what parables are? I, I can't see, the lights are bright, so just, yeah, yeah. All right, so parables, here's what parables are. Here's what parables are. Jesus came on the scene, he goes, I wanna teach you about the kingdom of God. Remember, there's the kingdom of earth, that's what we're living in right now. That's you gotta go this fast, if you eat this many calories, this thing happens. This is the kingdom of earth. But the kingdom of God is a totally different thing. It's the spiritual world we're living in. And Jesus comes on the scene and he goes, I'm going to do everything I can to explain the kingdom of God to you so that you understand how God operates. And I'm going to do it through parables or stories. And if you listen to these stories and you spend time on these stories, you're going to understand how I work. Everybody go over to Matthew 20. How are we doing today? Matthew 20. Verse 1. So Jesus goes, let me explain the kingdom. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire workers for his vineyard. He agreed to pay them a denarius for a day and sent them to work in the vineyard. So, so Jesus goes, here's, here's how the kingdom works. God wakes up early in the morning. There's this verse in the Bible. I love it. It says his mercies are new every morning. God's word says every morning we wake up, the slate is clean, there's new mercy, and the landowner's coming out going, who wants to work today? Who wants to walk with me today? And it says that the land, Jesus goes, this is how it works, every morning. God wakes up and goes, who wants to work? So the early risers, that's me, I get up in the morning every morning, I, I, I get up and, I, and I, I read my Bible, I read some news and get depressed. I go, I go walk five miles every morning. And then when I, when I say this, good morning, God, what are you up to today? How can I help? Put me in, coach. I'm ready. So then, so Jesus goes, but then here's what happens. About nine in the morning, some of you, 
he went out and saw others in the marketplace doing what? Not a darn thing. But not a darn thing. So he looked at them and said, hey, why don't you go work in the vineyard and I'll pay you the same. So they went. Then again, about noon, some of you. Then about three, some of you. And then about five, some of you. He went out and still found others doing what? Standing around. So he said to him, what have you been doing all day? It's like my dad when I was in junior high. Not a darn thing. <laughs> so, the, so Jesus goes, here's how God works. God wakes up in the morning. And there's new mercies waiting for you. And he goes, who wants to work the land of their life? And he realizes that, that the people are waiting all day long. And so finally they said nothing. And he goes, why aren't you working? He asks them, why aren't you working? And he says, because no one has hired us, they answered. Or the word uh, misoth, that's probably not how you actually say it. I don't know how you say it. But something like that, which means this. No one has invited us to work. He finds these people and goes, why aren't you working the land? And they go, because nobody invited us to. And Jesus goes, here's how God works. Whether it's the early risers, whether it's the nine, three, five, the God of this universe all day long is going, I'm inviting you to work on the kingdom. Yeah, I think so. I mean, that's the, that's the, that's, he's like, I'm just setting it up. And he goes, this is what I love about God. This is what I love about God. He keeps coming back. Anybody? Because I, mean, I, I don't know about you, but I, listen, I get up in the morning, I'm like, good morning, God, what are you up to today? And then about four minutes later, I'm not on the land. I'm off the reservation. Anybody? You know what I mean? And, and the Lord's like, don't worry. Uh, nine, three, five. All I want to do is I want to invite you into work. And so now uh, Jesus goes, God's got all these people and they're working on the land of their life. And then the story gets unfair. You ready? Because this is how life is. It's beautifully and tragically and wonderfully unfair. Verse eight, when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, call the workers and pay them their wages. Uh, Start with the last ones I hired and then go to the first. Now, why? God is like the ultimate Mr. Miyagi. Anybody cry kid? Something else is always happening. Something else is always happening. And so he says, he says uh, pay, the, pay, the, pay the ones that, that came last first. The workers that he hired about five in the afternoon, they each received a buck or a denarius. So when, they, so when those came who were hired first, they expect to get more money, right? I mean, I've been here all day, and so that's what they said. They're fired up, and they go, but each one of them received the denarius. When they received it, they begin to grumble against the landowner. These who hired last worked an hour, that he said, but you've made them equal to us who've borne the burden of work in the heat. This is the kingdom of God. And I love his response. But he answered to one of them, I'm not being unfair. I, I'm not being unfair to you. Didn't I agree that then you agreed you'd work for a denarius? Take your money and go. You take your bad little attitude and get off my land. I want to give the one who was hired the same as I gave you. This is what I love about God. I want to give the same blessing Oh, Josh, you think you're so spiritual because you get up at 6.15 and say, good morning, God, and blah, 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 blah. God doesn't think so. I love this about God. You know, I'm in Bible study fellowship, and I, and I sit on the front row, appreciate you ladies, and all these things. <laughs> but you know what God says? I don't care. Because the kingdom of God is a kingdom of grace. The kingdom of God is a kingdom of love. The kingdom of God is a kingdom of transformation and God's got one agenda in your life and it's not to collect wins, it's to transform your life. It's not to see who's the most spiritual, it's to see who wants to be transformed. That's the kingdom of God and God goes, why are you, and then he, then he pulls another fast one on these people. He goes, don't I have the right to choose how to lead my kingdom the way, whatever way I want? Or, he says, this is, this is dirty. Watch this. Or are you envious because I'm gracious and generous? Another translation says, or is your eye evil because I'm good? Jesus goes, this is how the kingdom of God works. 
Whether you show up in the morning or show up at the night, God's got the same blessing, which is I'm going to transform your life. And I'm not collecting wins. I'm collecting transformation. But there's one thing you got to remember. If you show up to the party with a bad attitude, with an envious heart, keeping score, you got to go. See, you look at this story and you go, this is reasonable. You ever, you ever just felt like uh, it's reasonable to be upset? You ever been like, man, God, why'd you bless Todd, of all people? And Todd's such a, nobody, I want Jill. Nobody even likes Jill. Why is Jill always getting blessed? If you're Jill, sub a new name in, Sarah. If you're Sarah, we're staying with you. But you ever done that and you go, you know, it's, you look at this thing and you go, it's, it's reasonable. It's reasonable. It's so hard to sit down. It's reasonable. Let me, let, me, let me pause for a minute. It's reasonable that you're upset with your marriage. It's reasonable that you're upset with your finances. It's reasonable. You can find a reason. Anybody have a reason? I got a reason. It was supposed to go like this. It's reasonable. But just because it's reasonable doesn't mean it's blessable. Just because you have a reason doesn't mean you're set up for a blessing. Because God does not bless reasonable. God blesses transformation. And these people sit here and go, this is, this is we have a reason to be upset. We worked harder. We put more time in. We deserve more. And God goes, that's just not how the kingdom of God works. I have one agenda. It's to radically restore marriages, radically restore finances, radically restore self-image, radically restore children, radically restore dads and moms. This is one agenda. To make you and me whole. That's it. That's it. And we can come up with a million reasons why we're not whole. But just because we have a reason doesn't mean we're set up for a blessing. So Jesus comes in. Isn't, this a, isn't God's word so good? Uh, I thought. <laughs> There's two reasons that the kingdom of God exists, and, I, and I'm going I'm to share this with you, because if you want to be blessed, if you want your marriage blessed, if you want your finances blessed, if you want your kids blessed, if you want your self-esteem and self-worth blessed, you got to understand that the kingdom of God has two agendas in your life. Number one, it's to till the land, till the land of your life. And number two, it's to test the heart. These are two agendas. And Jesus came in and goes, who wants to till the land? Who wants to root out bitterness? Who wants to root out jealousy? Who wants to root out insecurity? Who wants to root out self-hatred? Who wants to plant life? Because I don't care if you come at six in the morning or five at night, you're going to get the same gift, which is the blessing of restoration. Who wants to till the land? See, the land is the kingdom of God in you. The land is the kingdom of God in you. God's word says this in Colossians 2, 23 through 24. Whatever you do, what does it say? Whatever. That was what I was trying to get you to say. <laughs> Whatever you do. That's kind of a big thing. Whatever you do. Work at it with all your heart as working unto the Lord. For human masters, not for, not for human masters, since we know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It's to Christ serving you. Paul says this. Here's how this works. If you begin to work the land... And everything you do is unto the Lord. Every smile you give, every hug you give, every compliment you give, every nice thing you do, every, every bitterness you root out, every joy you restore, when you do it, you unlock the inheritance of God. Whatever you do. This morning I was coming to, to church and I was walking into Starbucks and this woman was clearly on a substance and she was like, hey, can you give me a coffee? And I I thought she said money, and I just was like, no, I don't have any. Please don't bother me. I'm a pastor preaching to people. 
I'm a very spiritual man right now. It's funny, I walked out and, and I got in my truck and I kept hearing, I kept hearing God remind me, whatever you do, whatever you do, you're going to unlock inheritance because here's what the inheritance is. You ready? Here's what the, I had this great story. Um, some of our friends, they hit some hard times financially and, and they, they needed help and they went to their parents and they said, hey, is there, is, can we get a loan or can we do something? And, and the mom said to them, you know, we've, we've got this money for your inheritance and sounds to me like you don't need it when we're dead. Sounds to me like you need it now. So let me give you my inheritance. And I'm going to tell you, there's never a better story than the inheritance of God. God says, you don't need my inheritance when you're dead. You need my inheritance right now. And here's what the inheritance is. Here's what the inheritance is. Because you might be wondering, well, what's the inheritance? Is it a pot of gold at the end of a rainbow? What is the inheritance? No, here's what the inheritance is. Galatians 5, 22 through 23. But the fruit of the Spirit, the result of God in you, the inheritance of God in you is joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against these things, there's no law. The inheritance of God is joy and peace and change in your life. And I don't know about you, but I don't need that when I'm dead. I need that right now. So I've been golfing too much. Anybody ever get in that rut? My back is on fire, all right? So yesterday, we're at the, we're at the, uh, the uh, soccer fields, and we get done, and my wife's like, um, hey, can you carry my chair? And my back's like, it's trembling. Like, this is, this is what my lower back looks like. And I'm like, I mean, things got a strap on it. You know what I'm saying? Like, your chair's got a strap. It's like, what? probably could carry it. That's what I'm thinking. My back hurts. We've been married over 20 years, carry your own chair. You know what I'm saying? No, just. I didn't say that. I said, I can't think of a greater joy right now. So I put that thing on. I'm walking like Kaiser Cersei back to the car. Like you. And I get back to the car and I, and I put my chair and I put her thing in and my, my legs are, I'm just hurting. And she starts handing me more stuff. And I'm like, just put it in the car. I got in the car and I was like, man, I need an inheritance right now. I need, an, I need some joy. I need some peace. I need some fear. I don't need an inheritance when I'm dead. And scripture says this, till the land then. Then till the land. Then do it unto the Lord. If you want an inheritance right now. Then do it unto the Lord and you'll unlock the inheritance. Second thing, testing of the heart. I love this because the landowner, Jesus, is, he's describing what, he wants us to understand how to be in relationship with him. He, he's just trying to make it simple. He's like, guys, like, here's where it gets funky. I, I'm really interested in your heart. I'm not interested in the other person's heart. I have a guy that I, I do some consulting with. He's a president of a couple hundred million dollar firm and I've worked with him for a while and I, I said to him, I said, uh, we'll call him Jim. We already use Jim. Well, Jim. I said, you're, you're, you're pushing everybody away. You're carrying all the burden yourself. This is getting toxic and I've known you for a long time and Jim, honestly, you're acting like your dad. I knew your dad. And he said, why do you think, actually, funny enough, his, name, his dad's name was Jim. He goes, why do you think Jim was like that? And I said, I don't care. That's Jim's problem to figure out. Why is Adam like that? You know what we love to do? Give me an amen if I'm lying. We love to say the reason we're not changing is because somebody else. We love to say the reason something isn't working is because of something else. Well, the reason I'm upset is because the landowner gave these. I wouldn't be upset if it wasn't for them. And God says the way the kingdom of God works, it's so beautifully, wonderfully attracted to you and your heart. It cares about you and your heart. It cares about you and your story. So he says, don't I have the right to do what I want with my own money? Or are you envious? Is your heart 
bad. Now, here's what I want you to understand. Scripture talks about how the heart works. Watch this. Do not judge or you'll be judged. For the same way you judge others, you'll be judged. With the measure you use, it'll be measured back to you. Scripture's going to unpack this. It goes, whatever you do, you're going to get. We got this thing, God, what I really want is, and God goes, well, what do you, what I really want, I want to see you give. I will give you what you give, not what you want. He uses this judgment. He goes, if you judge, can you imagine if you got judged at the same bar you judged everyone else? Anybody? I mean, just think about it. Because if you're anything like me, I try to judge about seven or eight people at a time. Anybody? And if I, if I took all of them, and I'm like, well, bah, 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 bah. and then you're like, well, what if all of that, what if, what if what you gave, you got? What if, what if what you put out, you ever wondered why fun, life-giving, affirming people have so many friends? You ever wondered why negative, nasty, judgy people drink coffee alone? Like attracts like. Favor attracts favor. Kindness attracts kindness. And it's scripture. God's word says what you do, you will get the exact same measure back. I got a friend of mine. He actually goes to church here. He's really involved. He's always picking up the bill. And finally, I'm like, dude, you're done getting all the blessings. I'm tired of you stealing all the blessing. This guy's always taking all the blessing. He keeps giving, he keeps getting. I'm like, I'm getting on that train. I'm getting this bill. Because it's scripture. God says what you put out, you're gonna get. But let me even take it further because this is what Jesus, he's, he's explaining to everybody. He goes, guys, you have to understand the kingdom of God is about changing your spouse's life. Your business partner's life. The kingdom of God is about fixing all those other people that are bothering you. The kingdom of God is about you. Because you're worth it. And the enemy of this world wants to do everything he can to take you to not look at you. You know why? You know why he wants to stop you from putting good things out? You know why he doesn't want you to say, I'm sorry to your spouse? You know why he wants you to, to not be gracious and kind to other people? Do you know why he doesn't want you to? There's a really good reason. Luke 6.38 says this, Give, and it'll be given to you. For the me for, watch this, a good measure, here's what you're going to get. If you give, here's what you're going to get. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over to be poured over in your lap. For the measure you use it, it'll be measured back in. The Bible says this. When you give, something happens. When you give forgiveness, when you give kindness, when you give joy, something happens. God's word says, it describes it like a vat. He says, imagine a vat that you gave all this stuff. That's what you gave. What I'm going to do is I'm going to press it down because I'm going to make more room to give back. And then I'm going to shake it so there's even more room. And then it's going to overflow. Whatever you give, the measure you're going to give back is the measure that's been pressed, shaken, and then it overflows in you. There's nothing. Jesus goes, this is how it works. This is how it works. This is how it works. Here's what favor is. Here's what blessing is. Here's what joy is. Here's what restoration is. It's the life. It's the individual life that says, I'm going to till my land. Would you stand with me? I'm just going to ask you a couple thoughts. You don't have to raise your hand or say anything, but how many, how many of you got some weeds in your marriage? How many of you got some weeds in your finances? How many of you got some weeds in your, in your self-love and care? How many of you got some weeds with your kids or your family? 
God's word says his mercies are new every morning. And men and women right now, it's dawn. It's dawn in your life. And the God of this universe is going, hey, you want to work on it? You want to work on your marriage? You want to work on your, your finances? You want to work on your relationship? You want to work, work on the way you love yourself? It's dawn. Who wants to work? Who wants to till the land? And undoubtedly, all these people will go, I want to till the land. I want to till it. I'm in. And God goes, awesome. Let's till the land. You go, great. Fix them. And he's like, oh, but now we're going to test the heart. Now we're going to test the heart. And you know what happens in this moment for most of us? We go, I'm, I don't think I can. I don't know if I can do it. We're going to sing two amazing songs. And I just want to, you know what I love about church? It's all the feels, man. It's truth. It's raw. It's human. There's nobody in here with a clean garden. Can I get an if I mean, I didn't even buy a coffee for somebody this morning. There ain't nobody here with a clean garden. They say true. And but for some of us, we go, I can't, Josh. I can't forgive them. I can't fix that. I can't get off that dependency. I can't see myself as beautiful. I can't. These two songs we're going to sing, one of them is, I'm calling on God. Some of you in this room today need to call on God. Because you can't. You've called on yourself. You've called on your spouse. You've called on other people. But you've you got to call on God. And we're going to finish this with this song that says, I surrender all. And men and women, there is something that you're holding on to. And you're going, I'm not going to let go of this. I want to invite you into the next moment to do work on your life. Not your spouse's life, not your neighbor's life, not Jill, not Tom, not Frank. You. This is your time to till your land and test your heart to transform your life.
this is running after, it's running after me always. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Hey, thanks for coming to church with us today. We want you to know that we're here for you. If you wanna connect with a pastor or a counselor, please call the church at the number below. And don't forget to engage with our daily devotionals and worship throughout the week with Garden Music wherever you like to stream. We'll see you guys next time.